I'm Dewan Johnson. Welcome to the Think Bigger Actors podcast, where I share with you different kinds of talks and coachings and conversations with actors and industry professionals on thinking bigger. I hope these conversations will help you on your path to success because I believe success is an inside job that starts with your mindset and the thoughts you hold dominant in your mind. Change your thoughts and you change your world. Your path to thinking bigger begins now. Welcome, welcome back to the Think Bigger Actors podcast. I'm your host, Dewan Johnson. Hey, what's up? We have a very, very, very special freaking podcast episode today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you already know what the special is. Um, I'm launching my YouTube channel, relaunching, I should say, actually. And we are kicking it off with this episode, which was done completely live in person with a live audience of actors and everything. And so I am basically here, um, you know, kicking this part off. And it, it's I'm just I'm just so excited. I've always known that I am a gatherer. I, I, I lean into that. That is a okay with me. I feel really great with that. And so bringing my community, my Think Bigger Actors tribe together for this episode was was just beautiful. Um, so I, I I reached out to any actor that I have worked with inside of, you know, Think Bigger Coaching before, or maybe who has listened to the podcast and you've reached out to me. Yeah, sometimes when you're reaching out to me a lot on the podcast, I'm like, okay, I put you in a little, a, a little database. I'm like, great, this would be a great person to reach out to as well. Well, so I invited a bunch of guests to come along and just say, hey, would you like to sit in on a live podcast uh, taping? And so many of you said yes. And I cannot be, um, I, I'm just so humbled and grateful uh, for this experience. I've always wanted to do something like this. I think my energy is matched for this. And so I, I did it. I did it. Talk about manifestation. You know me. I put it out there and it, it 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 came running, 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 running my way. So if you have not already, please pop over to uh, the Think Bigger Actors podcast or Think Bigger Actors uh, coaching, Think Bigger Actors coaching <laughs> over to and, and, and YouTube and to subscribe there and you can see all of this. But if you don't want to see it on YouTube, it's A-OK. -okay. You can get this on wherever you're always normally listening to me. Uh, maybe it's on a run. Maybe it's on a treadmill. Maybe it's in the car and all stuff like that. We got you. It's still good. But I'm just letting you know, we're launching that YouTube, baby. <laughs> And you probably are seeing this intro right now is all live of me. What do you call it? Um, I, I, I usually do this uh, on the podcast, but I wanted you to see my pretty face uh, here. So I did this part live as well, um, which I don't know if I'll keep doing this. It's, it's, it's just a little bit funny. I move around <laughs> too much on that. But listen up. Here is what I want to say. This first episode, we called in the big guns. I got... Emmy nominated Cameron Britton to come and sit with us for this episode. And man, let me tell you, he did not disappoint. This guy is an actor's actor. I had so much fun with him. And if you don't know him, I've had a crush on him, an actor's crush. I have an actor. We have talent crushes on so many people. You know what I mean? I just love very great, great, great talent. But I saw him first, I want to say four, five, six years ago in a Netflix uh, show called Mind Hunter. And he played oh gosh what's his last name ed something i can't remember ed I, I, i'm gonna mess it up i should have probably had this on my notes so i would know it but it, he was the killer he was phenomenal like phenomenal these are these roles that people you know dream about that we dream about as actors and he got in there and he kicked freaking butt with it so great job. And I was happy to, you know, just talk a little bit more about that. But you might know him from the Umbrella Academy where he was starring opposite Mary J. Blige. Hello, Mary J. Blige. That makes me basically, uh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like one removed from Mary J. We're so close. We're so close. Real love. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We also was in Manhunt and um, also uh, opposite Tom Hanks in A Man Called Otto. Maybe you saw that or you heard a little bit of something like that. That was fantastic. He's a, a, a freaking actor's actor, like I said. But we talked about so many great things. Number one being how he left L.A., how he was feeling like, great, I'm done with L.A. or I got to get out of here for a little bit. Left L.A. and 
I thought he was going to say, like, I mean, of course, spoiler alert, he's back here. But I was like, how did you come back? Because so many times we hear people leaving LA, but we never hear that they're coming back to it. I have one of my really best friends that I went to college with. We came out here to be actors. And he was like, I'm just going to go away, get myself together. Never came back, never came back. And so hearing Cameron's story about coming back and what you know pushed him and what fueled him is so good. It's so good. So good. He also talked about how war and peace and breaking bad literally changed his life. That's a story that's like, you know, you can't do that. Oh, and he talked about, you know, Mindhunter, but how that was a guest star role. That was a guest star role. And I don't want to harp on billing. I I'm understand billing and stuff like that, but I know there is this thing out there in the world and our acting world where everybody's like, I just want to be a series regular. I just, this role, I don't remember a lot about mine hunter but i do remember his performance i do remember that so and that was a guest star i'm i'm here to tell you all this stuff that people regurgitate because they hear other actors saying it it does not have to be your thing it does not have to be so check it out check it out i need to guest star ability to talk oh and last i'll tell you this there's so much there's so much good stuff so much good stuff he talked about but he talked about the advice that david fincher gave him forgive yourself before you start every project Forgive yourself before you start every single project. So good. So much good stuff. And I mean, he talks about that whole thing in there. I just freaking love it. You know what to do at the end of this. I have a beautiful, you know, uh, podcast here coming up. And then we did a QA and a with the actors in the room that you also get to listen to. And then, of course, stick around for the end for the D12 shot. Well, you know what I do. I bring it all together. <laughs> I'll see you soon. I think I did all the business, Cameron. I did, I did all the business stuff that we're gonna do. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna say this. We're gonna just start this off. And we're gonna be like, we're gonna be like, welcome to the Think Bigger Actors Podcast, you all. I'm your host. <laughs> Dewan Johnson. And this is our first live podcast in front of an audience. And this is Cameron Britton. And I I chose you to be the first. Guess. Or did you choose me? Like, I don't like, how did it, like, we're choosing each other, right? I, well, I think you chose me. I did. Yes. Yeah. But I chose to be here, so I there chose to be is. chosen. That's good. I called a friend of yours who, who kind of connected us for today, uh, Sean Miramatsu, who's here, um, last week. And I just, I'm going to Big Bear this weekend. I live above San Francisco. And I thought, well, if I'm coming in on Thursday... Why don't I come in Wednesday, and then instead of doing this podcast thing I'm doing on Zoom, I can be there live. And I called Sean. I was like, wouldn't that be so nice of me to come and like yeah, give yeah, Duan the yeah. opportunity? We can do this live. And Sean was like, are you not reading? Can you not read? Like, what? <laughs> what how do you not know this is not only is it live, it's in front of an audience. I just, I don't know how I missed that information. So I'm walking into this. I mean... The clothes I was planning on wearing, we're not going to get into. Um, Sean took a look at me and just looked me up and down. He said, um, you know, wear what you feel comfortable in. But I heard the tone, and, and now I have jeans on. I do have shoes around here somewhere. But I don't want you to wear shoes. Remember I told you? Like, if you are comfortable, I want you to be at your most comfortable. This interview right? is going to go much better without shoes. It is, shoes. right? I, yeah. Without shoes, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, I, we yeah. already had a conversation beforehand, and he was upset Mm -hmm. that he had to wear pants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my skin is just is screaming dude there's why what the sleeves with the sleeves what are we doing with sleeves yeah why is there cloth on your calves doesn't like it but, yeah you know it's cool in here and i'm yeah. not even getting too sweaty i love it i love it you all know him from mine hunter from umbrella academy from uh, a man called auto i mean i could go through your your resume there's three more so yeah there's like a lot more than I, you know, I love doing research. I think there's at least one more. No. Yeah, yeah, there's some a shrill. Yeah, no. Oh, that's a good one. Not yeah. the, I wasn't gonna, I was gonna say Unabomber. That's not that when the Boston. Uh, well, yeah, it's the, that was season one. Then okay. season two, they did a different bomber. Okay. But I was the guy who was pinned on the bomb. They, the Clint Eastwood movie was Richard Jewell. Right, right, right. Um, that's the character I played. It was a TV show Got version, it. yeah. Well, I'm going to start this off by a couple of rapid fire questions that are here. Okay. Um, and, you know, I want to know, he doesn't know these, the answer to it. I never give them the questions. Are you ready? Yeah. What's the favorite role you've ever played? 
That's that's Mindhunter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go into that. That as far as film, and or TV. Oh. On stage, I've done some stuff that I've just absolutely adored. I'd love to bring film TV, but okay. um, but but Ed. but Mindhunter. Oh man, yeah. Okay. Uh, everything about it. Everything about euphoric. It. That's what I. I mean, I loved you in that. Okay, wait, wait, yeah. hold on. Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. I will say that that there's a great answer to that if you don't want Ben Kingsley. If they ask him his favorite character, he says the next one, always the next one. Oh, so, that's what we should be saying. Yeah. Yeah. Good okay. answer, Kingsley. Talk about manifesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What um? What's your dream role, or what are you dying to play? Well, I was just mentioned. So I I would love to play a special needs character. I'd yeah. love to. I have a. Um, a certain affinity and, co and connection to the um, folks with special needs. Preschool, and it, preschool, yeah, 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 I have a, a very strong empathy for it. And I, I did one on on stage. We did one flew over the cuckoo's nest, which takes place in the '60s, where I think people were just like, "Oh, we'll call them crazy." I don't know. And now, you know, we have terms for it. But um, we were all on stage the whole time. You do this every rehearsal. We did the entire play from rehearsal one the entire thing all the way through again and again and again, so every rehearsal. So it became a madhouse. I mean, if you went to see this play, you could just look any direction, and from all those rehearsals, just being in this character in the moment so much, I just, uh, we get lost in it, and it it meant a lot. It's very, yeah. very kind of getting chills right now. It's very touching to be a part of. I have another big question for you. Ready? Why'd you become an actor? Attention. Validation, yeah, Love. but uh, not anymore. Not anymore, it's not for attention. No, that's so funny. You know, I yeah. used to say the same thing. Yeah. Like, I that's why I started acting. Yeah, and you know, it was a whole trauma experience yeah. when I was younger, and I was you know performing in my house so that we can take the attention off of situations. Yeah. That, but that's not why I've stayed an actor. That's exactly why I did it. Same, same yeah. younger sibling, just trying to keep the house happy. Yeah, um, I. You know, I grew up in the 90s, so comedy was Jim Carrey, it was Robin Williams, it was Chris Farley. It was a different kind of comedy than we see now, just mm. really out there, pretty broad and wacky and large. And so that was my life. I mean, I moved here to be Jim Carrey, which yeah. we, we can get into <laughs> how I ended up not doing any of like those projects that you can Ed, go on. Oh, yeah, Ed, Ed yeah. Jim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That serial killer you played was hilarious. I was yeah. laughing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! It's yeah. something the Zodiac said. He said he saw The Exorcist, and it was one of the best satirical comedies he'd ever seen. He's mm -hmm. probably just trying to creep people out. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But he did so. Say it. Take take us back. So if you're talking about childhood, let's think about this a little bit. Like you were up in glorious wine country. That's where you grew up, right? Like, I'm, I'm assuming. How did you? Was 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 the plan always to come down here and act? Like, did you dream that you would be, you know, uh, working opposite Tom Hanks? Like, yeah. was that always the plan? Like, I'm up in wine country, I'm doing great, and then all of a sudden you're like, I want to go down to L.A. So if you ask my mom, she knew from the get. But I, it was funny. I was 11. I'll, I'll never forget. I was watching Access Hollywood because we had one channel, and they said at the end, oh by the way, Chris Farley died, and I just went crump. I just fell apart. I I started crying in school. The next day, um, I know two, two or three other actors who also became actors because Chris Farley died. Very interesting. Um, and after so 11 on, this was just it. I mean, I memorized every stand-up comedy you could imagine, and I, I just jumped right into high school theaters, 900-seat theater. Um, very, very special experience. A lot of those folks are artists now, my grade, my class of actors. And um, moved out. I could, I, you know, it's beautiful. It's wine country. I'm a nature guy. Um, my family makes wine, so there was an opportunity to go into that business, but it, it just never called to me. So I... I did not know that. What kind of research am I doing? Is that out there? I don't know. I'm, I'm funny. It's secretive. I, I, maybe it changed, but my Wikipedia page, until, unless it changed recently, has been saying that I'm from Canada. And I'm very proud that people just oh. don't know about my life. I keep it kind of private. Um, I kind of like that an audience yeah. just knows me for this and gets lost in this and isn't thinking about, like, right. oh, this guy and he's dating this person. Like, God, I just like, like to keep that the way, the way it. But yeah, so I'm, I'm from a wine family. Okay. But callings are callings. And uh, moved, moved out here and uh, 
and there you are. Yeah, that was yeah. 2004. So it, we'll talk about how, what were you doing between 2004 and 2013 no, no, when your first wait. audition happened? You let's want to do it now? Let's not wait. Let's go okay. into it. Like, let's so, see what happened between there. So, because because yeah. you get kind of, in my mind, and maybe in others' mind, we kind of just like saw from, you, you know, what you think, but like Ed, yeah. right? Mindhunter. Yeah, 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 on yeah. the spot. Yeah. Catapult. You know what I mean? And so yeah. if there was something before... Wine country in there. Let's hear it. Okay, so I move here at 18. I go to Ad, uh, AMDA. <laughs> get them mixed up. <laughs> it's been that long. Um, it's across from Capitol Records, and it was the second semester they ever had. So we were definitely guinea pigs. Um, so graduated at the end of 2005, and then I found cheese and beer, and I just <laughs> fell in love. Just love at first taste. <laughs> and I... I Knew I would do theater my whole, I knew I'd act my whole life. I'm a fireman, whatever I'm gonna be, I'm still gonna do local theater. I just knew it. Um, but I had this great group of friends who were very driven, and they started a theater company that is, this theater is still going today, this theater company called Loft Ensemble. I'll be there tonight, actually. Um, so I was able to do theater with my friends, and then my, my best friend was working at a preschool for special needs kids, early intervention program. So. I started working there, and I suddenly have an audience. You know, I'm a teacher. There's 15 kids every day I get to entertain. It's a great audience too, because you know, you know, if you get a one-year-old, you know, two-year-old autistic kid's attention, you're you're in the zone. You're like, oh, it up. So, um, so I'm there, and I, I actually started going to SMC, a junior college out here, to, um, to to go into that field. Um, still doing theater and having a good time. And reps are coming up to me going, you know, hey, I like your work. I'm like, cool, well, you know, do you have a resume and headshot for me? Because I don't have one for me. And they go, well, well now I'm out of here, bye. So, um, yeah, that was, that was pretty much the way it was going. And then basically around 26, I was living in my car. Really? And I was very, very lazy and very disorganized. <laughs> Beef, that was cheese and beer. Yes. Cheese well, beer. I had that organized. <laughs> I knew like it was like two thirty one. It's time for brie, and then okay. I have a Sam Adams. That, yeah, I had that all locked on. But my car accrued so many tickets. The government took it, put it in a car hotel, and it was there for a month because I couldn't get it out because I didn't have an up-to-date driver's license or registration. It took a month to get those things together. By the time that month is over, that car has accrued $5,000 wow. in payment. So my wow. mom says, look, you're, you're now my least favorite child. I, she was living in Nashville with her boyfriend and said, you can move in with me and then you can pay me off. And I'm like, I'm going to Tennessee? Like, what's that? But that was one of the best things that happened to me. I'm, so you went back to Tennessee. I'd never been there, but yeah, I went. Okay. I stayed there for Dollywood for a year, and and um, that was when things started changing. You know, at that time, I was I had no self esteem to speak of, um, and I was, I I, I just it, things were quiet, and I was suddenly reading. I was contemplating. I was thinking, and something shifted in me. My friend said it when I got back, I, and I, I I was just prepared to be who I am and I was prepared to be responsible so I come back in 2013 I get my oh, first rep. Wait, so you got to Tennessee yeah right and like a lot of people when they leave they say they're going to come back and don't come back so you had that plan to always come back or yeah were you okay you were and like, none of my friends thought I was coming back right like, you don't, don't go don't go don't go but I mean mom's cooking y'all like you know what I mean yeah. you get home and yeah. it's like you yeah. know yeah so, but yeah. you, that's a big feat, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. To come back yeah. and, and make it. Because it, it, it just, I don't know, the quiet, the, there was, there were, there were two things that happened artistically out there. One, I read War and Peace and mm -hmm. Tolstoy is so specific. He's so enlightened. He's so philosophical. And I felt like I was in his brain and I felt like I didn't know you, it was almost like he was giving me a green light to go ahead and and get deep and get and and get specific on on what we are and sociology and things and I it really opened things up for me and the other thing that happened is I started watching Breaking Bad it was on my you know I was just watching it on my phone on Netflix and wasn't a huge show yet I think Netflix is kind of what got it big you know but I watched I just found it interesting I was watching Sopranos at the same time and I saw Brian Can 
Cranston and Gang James Gandolfini's performances, and I just noticed that their characters contradicted themselves. At one moment, they could be noble, and the next, churlish, or mm. they could be a great father, or they could be a monster. And I thought, that's, and then I actually, I saw Steve Carell in The yeah. Office, I thought, these people are contradictions in their own performances, and that's such a unique thing to do. And that was the shift from wacky zany. I came back and started doing theater with my friends again and started trying this drama thing. And I, I really found a lot of strength in it and and a voice. I guess I suddenly had a voice. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. That's that important, right? That's important. Yeah. I mean, I love that you came back, but I wanted yeah. to hear that little piece, right? Of like, what got you back? Yeah. What did you hook into? What was that stuff? Reading War and Peace. What is underneath that? Yeah. Because that's the piece when we're listening to this, when we're out there, we're thinking like, I can do it, or I can lean on this, yeah. or I can dive into this. Yeah. So um, I knew you, there was something else underneath. You know, and it's um, there's that old story about, it's like a, a guy walking down the street and he sees an old man in a rocking chair at his house and his dog's next to him whimpering. And he says, why is your dog whimpering? The old man's rocking. And he says, well, I believe he's sitting on a nail. And he says, well, why doesn't he get up? And the old man looks, he goes, well, I guess it doesn't hurt enough. And, it, you know, my mom actually told me that when we were in Nashville. And I, I think it hurt enough. I think it's like, okay, dude, mm. since you were 11, mm -hmm. And you, you can't, you can't get a headshot to get. You can't find out. Can't fuck around. And find out. <laughs> let's go and let's go try it. And and it it, it happened quickly. 2013 on, I booked Mind Hunter early 2016. Wow. Um, and between then was just a slow build of some co-stars and things. And then my first guest star was Mind Hunter, and it it was. And we'll get into that and everything, but. Um, it was, uh, it was just, it was, I, don't I don't regret, I don't think I was ready. I don't regret anything, but I, yeah. I, I, I like to think about that. I'm glad we're talking about this. I like to look at the context of where I've been and, yeah. and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a bill. Yeah, you know that. thank you. A little session. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think it's important. And I wanna hear, I wanna hear how you got to, I mean, 2014. And then we said 2016, 2017 was was Mindhunter. Yeah, like it was. Yeah, and 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 I was fascinated by two things about Mindhunter. One, your performance was just like it was. It's what I remember from that series. Oh, like, wow. do you know what I mean? I yeah. remember you and Jonathan. And the second yeah. thing is again your performance. But the second thing is um, that it was a guest star. I was like, I just thought you were like the main regular in that and uh, so i was you know I, what do you, you remember that and so yeah. i you know i think sometimes we get a little bit obsessed with billings out there yeah, as actors yeah. yeah and to see that like yeah you did a bang up job with a guest you know thank you um Creepy. Creepy, All creepy, creepy AF. Thank creepy. you. Creepy. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I want to hear. Um, which I I never thought I could play intimidating. Um, but I, Wait a minute. You're like 6'1". Well, that's the thing. Like, like you, you put me next to a dude who you're actually going to book for like a Hells Angels or like okay. a bouncer or construction mm -hmm. worker. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, no, no, this guy is not going to do it. Um, but... You know, Kemper's Creepy was more perverted and insidious, and it was psychological. And um, all credit to David Fincher. Mm -hmm. He never treated me like a guest star. We're talking six auditions over six weeks with notes. We're talking $90,000 an hour rehearsals. We're talking, wow. this man's coming to my costume fittings three months out. Um, and it ended up being, I mean, he would talk to me on the phone. I mean, he would... Uh, we talked 45 minutes about, you know, once once it came out, I didn't know what the hell to do with my life career. I'd never planned on any of this. I was just happy paying a little extra doing acting. And I just didn't have anyone I felt in my wheelhouse who could relate or really give me advice. <laughs> he took 45 minutes out of his day to just give me some advice, talk to me about about what about how, what? To, how to handle a career and how to move forward, how to pick a project and. He said, forgive yourself before you start every project, you know, wow. which is a beautiful way of like, what does that mean? It means take that fucking risk. 
because if you play it safe and it doesn't work, then nobody wins. But if if you take a risk and it doesn't work, you you win so much in the character. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. you okay. gain so much by just going for it. But he 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 talked to me a lot about green lights. I think he could see that I was pre-planning things. Again, all I've done is theater, and I didn't have a real. Um, I didn't feel like any of the teachers I had really prepared me um, as well as as they may have in in the sense that. Nobody told me that I'm pre-planning my lines and saying my delivery the same way every time. And so I get to the Mind Hunter set, and if you don't know Fincher's style, um, you're probably doing 30 takes of setup. So you're doing 11 minute scenes 150 times all at the end of the day. Um, and so he just gave me the green light to go. He said, actors want to get it right. Directors want you to get it wrong. They want you to make mistakes. They want you to surprise yourself. Wow. And I had to rewire <laughs> my whole brain starting in when it came out um, 2017 or so. I just I just started to to move forward completely free because no, I don't know my blocking. I don't know what my scene partners bring. This isn't theater. Yeah. You have yeah. to show up and be so accessible, so present, so willing to surprise yourself. And that meant a real rewiring because we're talking 20 years of acting one way. And man, that was that was a fun build to. I learned a lot about myself from learning how to just daydream, just truly be open and free. How many sort of like I kind of think talent of a Fincher actually talked about this too. To, you just don't overthink your gift. You, it's a gift. Talent is yeah. a gift. You were born with it. Just be grateful for that gift and know you're the vessel. And you can't you can't walk around all puffed up like yeah I'm good. You didn't. You were born with it. It's like bragging about being tall. You don't have that right. So the the skill that we learn is how to get out of our own way. There's this web of you, your talents trying to get out and through and. The more you do whatever you need to do to get where you need to get, I find it philosophy. I read about a half an hour of philosophy every morning. I meditate. I've just found these ways to get through fear or anger, anxiety, whatever it is. So I'm so present on the day. Um, and that, I think, is what I'm grateful about the most about our careers is it keeps showing you to yourself, it keeps showing you what you can work on. Um, I'm a bit rambly, but I loved it. It can you ramble more? Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like so. I like was I'm also just like tell me more. <laughs> as much as Mind Hunter was um, euphoric, and you're in character from morning. You stop for lunch. That's it. You you're just the man would go. They had to put shackles on me, and then they get taken off in the scene. So then when he says cut, prop guy has to come. His name was Kip, and he had to put him back on. Um, and David would say, because we're sitting in chairs, and he just likes to keep going. So he'd say, cut, rolling, and act, we're back to win. And Kip's trying to get the, he goes, rolling, fucking rolling. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put him on dive out of the way. You are just in. And Monday, first day of shooting, I went home, head hit the pillows, out. Next day, I was a little less, set. by Thursday, I couldn't sleep. I was so full of of energy, of life, of every. I mean that 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 was the high points. But then, if you're not feeling right about a scene, your confidence isn't that high in general. And now you're doing 150 takes of that, and it's your first guest star, and you're in front of these Academy Award. I mean, yeah, yeah. I started falling apart, and it was Wednesday. I think that day happened where it was low, and I called Jonathan Groff after. And I said, I think we all know how I did today, and I need help, and I need you to, like, what do I do? And Jonathan didn't know what I was talking about. He said, man, we could have used every take. And I went, oh, okay. So there's, wait a minute. Why did there's you a perception think, thing. Why did, yeah, I was going to say, why did you think that you bombed it? You've had, like, this lead-up of a dream for us actors out there, right? You have been... Uh, I thought I was going to get fired. And I mean, right? Like you, I mean, you went, Emmy, right? you went through yeah. right. Like it's yeah. like, and how? Like, why did you? This is how that little saboteur plays. This is that little gremlin mm -hmm. in your mind that mm -hmm. tells you mm -hmm. that this sucked. 
so bad, mm -hmm. right? And instead, it was like just you getting out of your own way because you did so well. Like, I don't understand how you got from 45 minutes of calls and, you know, David being there and really having this guy in your corner to thinking, I crapped the bed. Well, these this start sort of happened. So Before. after my call with Jonathan, conveniently the next day at lunch, Fincher sits with me and starts giving me advice and giving me permission ah, to, to work. It. So, oh, so you I think, think Jonathan snitched. Yeah. Jonathan, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was like, "Hey, we got a, we got a really green kid here, man. <laughs> like, he's feeling funky." Yeah. And, but I think perception of self is our our uh, one of our largest enemies. I think it mm -hmm. it really is an extension of ego because um, on this journey to free my mind and just be present, I realized how often I'm not and how often I'm controlled. I kind of thought ego was just like people who think about themselves all the time and think super highly of themselves. It's not what it is. It's this story. And it's often you've got one ear going. There's a poet, Anne Lamott. She talks about it. She calls it uh, KFKD Radio, K-Fucked. And <laughs> you, especially as creatives, we've got these stories going and one ear is, you know, a rock and roll ballad about how awesome you are and special <laughs> and unique. And the other ear is a song about how worthless you are. And and they're going at the same time while you're trying to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about like my 20s, like just going into a restaurant, saying hello to the hostess, being led to my table, picking up my menu, ordering, and then talking to the waiter, like, that was exhausting. There were so many thoughts going in my head. What's everybody thinking of me? What's it all look like? And yeah. that, that was just out of control. And when I read, I, I, I just found these books that described ego. And I just started realizing all this like in your head shit that's slowing me down when I'm thinking about how much I suck on doing my line stuff. That's all this has been. And I just need to quiet this thing. Um, I think things really, really moved forward better for me after that. But there's um as, as far as perception of self, as far as ego, my story was that I'm just simply undeserving. I've called myself before a walking apology, almost like mm. I'm sorry I'm in the room. I'm sorry that my presence, even I'm, I'm sitting quietly, you know, this this kid, Cameron, this 11-year-old, I'd go to the cool kids at school and I'd give them my money, like literally at lunch, just hand the money and walk away. I was... Just wanted to be liked, and uh, so there's a quote from a sociologist um, from the 19 Charles Horton Cooley, early 1900s. He said, "I'm not what I think I am. I'm not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am." And that can get a little Yoda y but <laughs> it's I'm, I'm, basically I'm me. Yeah, it's it's yeah. that you are basing your identity mm -hmm. off of what you think other they people think. perceive you as. Yeah. What a mind fuck. And how many of us mm -hmm. are doing that? Right. How many of us don't even realize we're doing that? How much we're going, oh, I'm the funny, charming one. Cool, I'll be that for everyone. Because this person, I'm pretty sure, thinks I'm that. Like, that, yeah. that was me. And when I had to turn around and look like, I'm really going to, I'm saying embarrassing things. I'm coming to set even after Mine Hunter. I'm working with Kristen Bell. I'm working with um, um, A.D. Bryant. And I'm walking away from set like, why did I say that? Oh, because now they're the cool kids. And now I'm right. trying to, I'm trying too hard. I'm not just being me. And so fast forward to, I got it offered to be in a role in a Tom Hanks movie, A Man Called Otto. I have three months to prepare a pretty simple character. I've played a lot of silly, happy, sweet kids. So, and if I if I overperform this character, it's going to take away from the scene. The scene is not about me. <laughs> you know, I'm supporting I'm, the story. I'm sort of helping audiences see who Tom Hanks' character is more than see who mine. So my prep went into three months of making sure I walk in with the coolest of cool kids, the man, and just be me and be good. Yeah. And I I cannot I can say safely it was a very successful experience and I had a really wonderful time of course he's not scary and he makes a point not to be so he made it easier but but I owe it I I, I owe it to mine hunter I owe it to going holy heck man like my perception of self is 
way off. It was way that's off. A, that's so funny. I read a book um, called um, Sober Curious. If anybody's ever heard of that book before. And um, I was just reading it. Somebody, like, I used to give up drinking for the, um, uh, what is it, Lent. I like Lent. And I would just do it because everybody at my job was doing it. I was like, 40 days, we're just going to do it. This is something I do. And somebody handed me this book called Sober Curious. Mm. And one of the things that started to happen when I started to get Sober Curious was um, I got to see what other people thought of me in those moments where people were just like, you're not as fun when you don't drink. And I was like, well, I don't, why do I need to be the life of the party drunk? Why can't I just be the life of the party the way I want to be and all that stuff? And I took a lot of that to set too, where I was like, well, they want me to be the nice, you know, stand up guy who is unassuming, who is not, I, all that stuff. But then I got to a place where, Cameron, that's just exhausting. I was exhausted from just playing all the sides where I thought everybody... You're playing games no one's oh playing. Oh my God, I'm like gymnastics, like, you know what I mean? And nobody and nobody else is as tired. I would, you know, listen, also as a person of color, when I would get out of my car, I would think I have to put on a difference. Yeah. Like I yeah. have to be something else. And I was, oh. and, and I gotta tell you, similar to you, being on a series for a while, right? Kind of just let me sit into this where I was just kind of like, this is who I am. This is what we got, you know, and I am so tired of of being something that somebody else thinks I am. Right. And I just got to that place. And I and I'll just add this little piece to that also that gremlin that tells you on set, that tells you that you suck, that tells you that you didn't do something right. I had to really talk to it on set. I had to really stop and I had to like really actively talk to myself and say, Dewan, if they moved on. You did okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, and keep going because I would, oh gosh, I did, I messed up and then I couldn't do the, because detective work was all like one, go over here, put this down and go over to that table, grab that. And you know, if you do it for like the third time, you know, you're like, people are, they hate me. They're going to fire me. But by like season four, I was just like, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, do, do yeah. all that to say is like, I think we all kind of go through a version yeah. of that. But the real part of it is now, and I, I wonder if it's like this for you, Cameron. Now, when I show up on anybody else's set, I'm guest starring, I'm on a new set, I'm doing a headshot shoot or something like that, I feel like I'm myself. I feel like I can have a conversation where I'm like, no, this is, we're good. Right. I'm here to make your show better. You know right. what I mean? I'm going to pop in right. and leave. And it, so it gets to that place, but it took a while. Right. So I don't know. It's like the difference between now and then. The thoughts are still there. Some of those feelings still yeah. come up. But instead of perception, I, I have observation. Now I just watch the thought go by. and I, Like oh, a ticker. Oh, yeah. Like a little ticker on CNN. Yeah. Like, yeah. Going, like a little <laughs> That's ticker. That's exactly right. That's all it is. Don't engage. <laughs> Breaking news. You suck. <laughs> 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 Breaking news, you rule. Oh, cool. That's cool. It's got nothing to do with me. That's my brain just doing stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's the ego telling the story. And you talk about the gremlin. You you know, I've, I've heard people say, you know, yeah, you, you take that part of yourself and you kind of give it a mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. um, pardon me. Um, Mine is Bruce. Yours is Bruce. Mine is Bruce. Ah. Bruce is my guy. And I can talk to Bruce. Ah. I, have to, I have to get that. Can we Sean, yours, is yours still Butch? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> He was telling me about Butch, and I said, step aside, Butch. And you hadn't made that connection. <laughs> you were so excited. To, so you're asking him to step aside. I like to say to mine, thank you for caring enough to yes. share that with me. Because yes. this dude's trying to protect me. I call him um, <laughs> Are we going to share your name? Yeah, I call him Waldo? Waldo. He reminds me of that long, tall, evil guy from Frosty the Snowman. Remember the cartoon? No, it's just deadpan out there. Anyway, he looks <laughs> in my like, brain. He's young. funny. Waldo's funny. <laughs> but I say thanks, Waldo. He, I call him um, overthinking, unimportant Waldo because that's yeah. what he thinks I am. Um, anyway, so where were we? We were, just, we were talking about alcohol. We were talking yeah. about my We were talking about going back and forth in Gremlins. I love alcohol. And about Waldo. You know, I, I and, and I don't want to give the perception. So if you all see me out drinking one day, I'm not. You're like, yeah, one yeah, sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sober. I just wanted the, the point of sober curious was that 
why is it that only those individuals who quote unquote have a problem with drinking cannot drink? And I was just, I've always thought, I just always thought I had to drink. And I realized that I couldn't manage my anxiety when I'm drinking and that that's why I stopped. Right, right. So, I mean, and, and, I, and I also didn't want to wake up hungover before an yeah, audition yeah. or like yeah. when I felt weird on set, like yeah. I didn't want to like, you know, I just... I just wanted to know. Are you deep listening to me or are you judging me? Let's see, that was my gremlin. I just. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know, I've heard that people, my wife in particular, thinks I'm judgy and it might just be resting judge is, face. Is it just I don't face? Because I had no idea that you were, you were looking, you were like, are you judging me? What? what well, or it I'm could be deep I'm listening. lost. I'm really moved by what I you started said. by deep listening yeah. first, and yeah. then I said, "Are you judging me?" Yeah, you got to the one that you were really wondering. About. Oh, <laughs> all so right. I just judged. Commercial him. break. No. <laughs> Maybe I am judging. No, it's good. It's it's okay. Yeah. You know, I I I I I'm okay being judged now. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I I don't I don't I'm okay with what I think is a judgment. On yeah. That. Yeah. It's not in your control, is it? You know, it is if not, someone else is doing something that you literally have no control over that, it's, it's I, I another thing having I to this. learn. I don't recommend doing this for anybody that doesn't want yeah. to do this. Yeah. But having kids, man, I just don't give a F. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. like, I just, like, I'm so focused on that part of my world. Yeah. Like, and focused on the other stuff. So that's why I don't care about anybody else judging and doing all the other stuff. I'm yeah. just yeah. really, like, yeah. if it doesn't have anything to do with my boys, yeah. like, I, you know, my boys mm -hmm. or my money, what, you know. <laughs> Or my money, yeah. yeah. We can listen. Yeah. We can talk about That's money. Perfect. Like, can I? Can I ask? Yeah. It, when you got, when you had kids, did did the pressure go down for acting? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for you, huh? Um, because for me, I was like, acting is everything. I need to be Dustin Hoffman, or I will die. Yes. And then, and then I had a kid, and I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Acting's all right. <laughs> It's now second billing, you know. I think it is second billing. Yeah. I think one of the things, though, that happened for me with acting, one of my boys, um, I fostered to adopt, and my boys came. Um, being a dad, what did happen was my um, emotional reservoir opened up. Mm. And I think that is for me that I can pinpoint when I became a deeper, more present actor. You talk about having presence. I think all of that happened when you have these little tiny humans around at just... I've never felt this wave of like being protective or this mm -hmm. wave of like um, just emotion. I'm constantly thinking of somebody else besides myself. Mm -hmm. Even now, I know they're fine. They're not at home alone. Um, yeah. So I would say that, but I also would say that is why the reason I started one of my big programs called Self Tape Set Book, because I needed a quick codified way to drop into my character if I have a 24 hour audition because you know who doesn't care about my audition? The kids, they wanna eat. And before there were self tapes, there were in-person auditions where we only had 24 hours, mm -hmm. where we had 48 hours to mm -hmm. come up with, you know, these amazing characters, right, you right. know? Like yeah. we didn't have, I wish we had that lead time. Yeah. I had 48 hours to come up with something, so yeah. I don't. Yeah. So that's what happened with me with parenting. What happened with you? Um, yeah, the stakes went down. I just felt way less pressure because yeah. I, my kid just became my world. Um, I I do find it to be much more difficult to work on a role, um, for sure. But I love that you said it. I just love that your, your emotional accessibility, your yeah. well, just opened up. Yeah, that that happened big. That happened big for me. You know, there's definitely some motivation to do it for him. There's some motivation to be my best self for him yeah. because unfortunately for him I may end up being his hero and <laughs> what kind of hero do I want my kid to have yeah. a fucking hypocrite or like mm -hmm. you know so I work on me I work on me how old is he he's four turned yeah. four wait till they get to my kids age they don't care yeah I try to get him to go to set with me and dad they don't know they don't <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's like, it's not amazing. God, yeah. We work all this time to be actors yeah, and yeah, to get in front yeah, of like and just to like yeah. to show it off yeah. and then we like can show it yeah. off to the kids and yeah. guess what? They don't care. I heard that Michael Jordan's kids will not would not let him 
teach them how to play basketball. It would not. Joe Montana, this kid, was like, I want to be a quarterback. He was like, really? Let mm. me show them. They were like, no, Dad, get out of here, Dad. He was like, <laughs> what? Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kids. <laughs> so you're saying, so you're saying yeah. there's a chance. They still love yeah, you. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I, love I don't know if he'll be an actor. Be interesting. It will be interesting. Before we get too far off of Ed, you all, I want to just like say real quick because I I want to I want to I want I want to talk about some other things, but I really want to think about like you're such a light person right here. When I'm talking to you, all mm. the times I've talked to you, mm. like you know, I think you're light. Mm. You know, about two seventy. I <laughs> I will not take that bait, sir. <laughs> uh, but I but I. Ed was such a dark, deep person. And, you know, I've, I've played a live person, too. I did um, the MTV Pedro story where the, the, this is a real person you played. Right. You know, and so I'm, I'm just wondering for us acting buffs out there, uh, if you don't mind sharing, how oh did man. you get into that process? Oh how man. did you peel that back and you were able to play something so dark uh, and so like his hands tapping dude, are you getting get like all, it's like getting it uh, I, I'm a little I scared all fired up talking about <laughs> Kemper early yeah I I can say first I did a show um on stage a little 50 seat theater but I played a madman like impulsive he 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 had a low IQ and when he got confused mm. he got violent and just psych psychopathic um so I was able to take all of those insane impulses and and feel them and just never act on them. And they all ended up behind the eyes. The thing about a sociopath so is that they practice being a regular human. Kemper himself would talk about how if he pulled up to a hitchhiker and looked them dead in the eye, was like, hi, would you like a ride? They'd be like, no, I'm good, thank you. But if he kind of pulled up and like checked the mirror and like changed the radio, it was like, hey, you need a ride? And then they'd get in. So he'd practice the little things. Um, mm -hmm. Fincher and I talked about Anthony Hopkins' role in, um, which he goes by Tony, and I don't think I could call him that. I don't, I don't, but we don't, there's no Tony. Call me Tony, <laughs> if I can call you Mr. Sir Anthony Hopkins, sir. Um, <laughs> but he, so his role, he talks to me, he says it was a very theatrical performance as Hannibal Lecter. And mm. it's true, because the facts of the matter are, if, if that performance came up to you and said, hi, would you like to come to dinner? You would say, no, thank you. No, ever, no, thank you. So our job was to let me go to grocery stores, dog parks, with a dog, um, and uh, Uber rides, just in character weird people started saying weird stuff to me. People would be like, oh, I hit my dog, I kick my dog, I do whatever. And I'd be like, yeah, well, you need to do that. You know, I'm just in character, I'm just going for it. There's, nobody talks to me like that when I'm Cameron, but what, what I found, which can apply to any performance, is the mask. You know, there's, there's who this character really is, and then it's, there's who they want everyone to see them as. Ooh. So if you perform them both, you always have something to play inside of you or have something active going on in there because you've got that mask, that extra layer. And there was something about sitting in this chair, not moving, completely still, and just looking into Jonathan Croft's sweet and innocent face and thinking, I just want to eat your neck. And having that impulse but this practice mask would just keep me calm and polite and affable. <laughs> and I think it, it just led to, to something. The writing is as good as it gets. Um, I'd rehearse with person after person, all my friends, and um, people just kept coming back to, when you say these horrible events casually, it's the scariest. When you lean in and try to be scary, it's not as effective. If I just throw off like, yeah, you know, I fucked her head, you know, just kind of chilling. It it really, we, we, we just found some really interesting things to bring to the table. And then the producers were saying the same. It says, it just feels like you're at a day at the spa. You're sitting in this prison, wow. super relaxed and chill. And it, that did something. I pulled from some, I pulled from Kemper. I watched his tapes. I, there was a little bit of Robert California from The Office. If you're an Office fan, there's a little bit of him in there. There's... There's a little Jimmy Stewart. There, there's, 
there's my grandfather, there's just sort of, but they wasn't like, I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'll put my grandfather in and just put him in the, it, it doesn't work that way, I just sort of realized they were kind of coming out. Um, but the voice. Oh. But the voice. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the voice. Yeah. And the voice is different. It's different. Like his Some voice. people recognize me f because our voices are somewhat similar. We're both from similar areas of California. Um, but yeah, yeah, I worked on the voice, not with a coach, just kind of got the essence. And I learned a lot from watching him. When I first watched him, he has this, it's mirrored in the show. He's talking about the night he uh, murdered his mother. And when he got in the interview, he gets to this point where he says, you know, basically I walked into her room and, and she woke up and I raised the hammer. And right when he gets there, he starts crying. And he says, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm not a lizard. I wasn't born under a rock. Um, man, my heart went out. I said, man, if you have a modicum of empathy and you did those things, it must be hell inside of you. So that's how I started working out on the character. Then, mm -hmm. then a couple months in, I found another interview years later, and they asked him the same, could you tell us about the night you, you killed your mother? And he gets to the same moment um, saying, okay, I go into a room, and she, you know, she wakes up, and I, I said, good night, mother, and I raise the hammer. And then the, 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 the interviewer asked him a question, and it, and Kemper said, wait, wait, you're wiping out the moment. And I said, oh, that's who we're working with. Okay. No more. <laughs> no more. I'm playing a, a person with, this is his moment. This is a, okay. So those interviews were effective. I learned a lot. Um, then I had to move off of them and just follow my instincts and make the person I made. I've done other real life people and I've used less of their interviews. I've, um, I think that's just instinct. It just calls you to go yeah. where, where you're going to be the most truthful. Cameron, I think that, not to, like, I think that moment's great. I, would, I don't want to wipe the moment. Right oh, now, but I just want to hear if you can take us back to the audition, though. Right? Like yeah. the audition. Because I think, like, yeah. you, if we, if it, oh. not, I, I assume if we have a long period of time, yeah, like we can definitely. I could, I could come up with some amazing stuff like you did. But I wonder, like, you had to do some of this stuff in that audition. I imagine it was in the room, right? It was yeah. in 20, 2015? Well, no. So I was always fascinated by serial killers. Um, so ah, start with there. So now always. we get to it. <laughs> oh yeah, I've always been. Like, wow. Um, but it was a self tape, and it was for something called Mind Hunter. And what? frankly, I thought that just sounds like a made-for-TV kind of silly thing. Um, so it's a funny name. Um, and I, I get a, it, it's a self tape and I just. I did not know this, you all. This is not planned. I did yeah. not know it was a self tape. I yeah. totally thought yeah. it was going to be in no, a room. Self tape. And yeah. I, yeah, I did I, not know this. I pull up the script and within three lines, it just felt so honest. I said, this might be a real person. It didn't describe it in the, in the email. So then I go online, I type in a camera and I go down a fucking rabbit hole. And then I look back and it's like, oh, Charlize. Thrones producing a Netflix for David Fincher. Like, oh, so I work like crazy. I don't think I had, may have, I don't think I had 48 hours for the first self tape. I didn't, I wasn't able to get all the lines down. We had to tape them on the, on the, um, just off to the side of the camera. I wrote them in big writing and taped them on a shelf. And I would sort of, it looks like I'm just thinking, just looking off to my right, but I'm reading the damn lines. So we do it. And we went till midnight, just kept one. I was like, I know there's a little bit more behind the eyes here. So then the first and only time that I've had a call back for a self-tape, <laughs> I felt self-taped again. Um, it's a good the, one. It's a good one to have a call back on. Though. Yeah. <laughs> and then number three, they brought me in and I had, I was on set and did not have time. They set, they added eight pages and were like, come in tomorrow. I was like, are you fucking? So I decided I'm wow. going to work on the character and not the lines. And I, I would just know the lines, of course, but didn't try to memorize them. And I went in. It was Lorray Mayfield. And I sat like this. And I would listen to her. And I just looked down, bring it up, and just, just kept it very much like that. So then they did a fourth one. They wanted me memorized. They gave me a week. And then they did a fifth one. I don't know why. And then they did, oh, the fifth, the, the fifth one, they said, you talk too slowly. Let's do it fast. So then I do that. 
And then they said, you talk, actually, we liked when you talk slowly, so let's do a six. <laughs> and that was the one when Fincher was there, and yeah. I was nervous as hell, and then the door opened. My friend tripped me out. I was on the way. He was like, you're going now? I was like, yeah, Fincher's there? He goes, yeah. He goes, who's the detective? Who's playing it? I said, I don't know. He goes, what do you mean? You don't know who's the detective? I said, I don't why, why? He goes, he's going to be there. I go, yeah. He goes, dude, you might open that door and it might be like Jake Gyllenhaal. You have no idea who's going to be. I went, oh my God, who's the detective? Like just sitting there. But when I finally opened that door, there's Fincher. My first thought is, oh, that's right. He's just a person. And my second thought was seeing Jonathan Groff. Oh, good. It's just some fucking guy. Because I had never seen any of his stuff. Cool. It's just my guy. Um, we talked for a good hour. Um, he shook my hand, just jumped right in. And then I booked it. Yeah. Um, but those those auditions were, were really, really, really great six weeks of prep, really. Um, yeah. So when you, you left, me back, man. when you left Mindhunter, and you're good, everybody's uh, it's out there, and so what? What do you wish you had known, getting ready to go into your next venture? Oh, I wish I had known that your ego gets higher with success. That Ooh. that's when it goes crazy. Denzel told Will Smith at the Oscars, not those other the ones we're all thinking of. With Will Smith and the Oscars. Not he, that one. He said at commercial break. He, no, that one. Yeah. Oh, that one. He hit Chris Rock. And then on okay. commercial break, <laughs> he's it, like, it, okay, what am I doing? His, I guess his publicist walk, ran up and was like, we need to talk right now. But so did Denzel. And he came in and, that, and, and he that. took a knee and he said, um, at your highest moments, that's when the devil comes for you. Um, mm -hmm. You can equate that to the ego. You know, it's the same thing. And and I, I, I hit um, probably... Like there, there was just a crazy peak where I'm holding my infant son, and I'm, I'm, I'm first billing, and I'm getting paid like more than I'd ever have needed or was looking for. I was just so I was clinically depressed. I was really, really. It was 2019, and it was all just this ego thing. There's so many stories, so much expectation suddenly, and expectation leads to disappointment. This isn't. You know, there's a reason Buddhism's been around for so long. Like, you suffer because you have desire. And if you work to get desire out of your heart, expectation, you, you find so much peace. And um, had I known that earlier, it's such an interesting question. Tammy, you question. had expectation or the world expectation? I just want to be clear. I did. You had expectation. I had. Suddenly, I went from like, oh, it'd be cool to pay my rent through acting to like, I am Philip Seymour Hoffman. This must happen. Got and, it. Um, got it. Got it. And I just put a lot of pressure on me. But... I don't know if I would actually want to have known that then because most of the best things that have ever happened to me have been my hardest stuff. Like yeah. that that significant other didn't want to be with me anymore or that, um, that depression or that horrible year-long back problem. They mm -hmm. end up being some of the best things that have ever happened to me because... Um, if you, if you regret your mistakes, you didn't learn from them, you know. Mm -hmm. I, so I'm kind of glad I was a hot. Oh my god, I was such a hot mess. I had so much help, so much support, so many great people. But there were some. Here's an embarrassing one. Let's go for it. I'm in Let's go Umbrella it. Academy. Yeah, with Mary J. And I am pacing back. And Mary's in the same boat. She's like, I'm a bad actress. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, me too. No. Me too. She's like, shut the fuck up. You're a good actor. I'm like, you're a good actor. Shut the fuck up. And we're kind of doing. So um, that's not how we spoke to each other. We didn't tell each other to shut the fuck up. It never happened. Um, but you get the point. So I, the showrunner is walking by me as I'm heading to the bathroom between takes, between setups. And he goes, hey, man, good to see you. How you doing? I literally just loudly, I'm like, hey, Steve, I'm fucking up your show. I'm doing a really bad job. So that's how I'm doing it. Just, and he went, you're not doing a bet. I wouldn't even hear. I was in the bathroom already. And then I got back to set and everyone was so nice to me for the rest of the day and I realized my mic was fucking hot when I said that shit so that's on me so that's the kind of shit note I to was, self don't I have a hot a, mic I was a train wreck on, mm. on Umbrella Academy I was just so in my head and low and the expectations and like man I missed out on a great time at times Still had a good show. time. I loved it. Thank you. I, I loved it. I, I miss that. I love that character. I, I, that was I, really, really good. Yeah. 
Hazel, yeah. right? Hazel, Hazel. Hazel. Yeah. 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 Hazel was fun as hell. It was a great performance. Yeah. And oh, do you, you. A real, here's a hard hitting question that I really know I want to know about Umbrella Academy since we're talking about it, if you don't mind. Um, do you have Mary J's phone number in your phone? Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> oh, come on, come mm -hmm. on. You always think of that. I mean, you want to know I, what she's called on my phone? What's she called? She's called Cha Cha. Oh. Yeah. Every yeah. time I work with an actor and they have some great character and just That's don't okay. use the actor's name, yeah. I get that character's texting me. So I get yeah. a text with Cha Cha. I texted her recently. She didn't text me back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when we were, we're, we were, you know, five months in Toronto together and she didn't know anyone in Toronto for everyone she does know and party with. We did. So we were hanging out a lot and we called each other family. We got really close, but I knew by that point that there are a lot of close friends you make on set do. who, yeah. when the project's over, you know, yeah. if you see them again, it's close. It's like, we're best. But if you don't, it's just kind of, and, and Mary's a little busy, so I don't. She's got something to do. I do not. The front of her, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. got things going on. Yeah. So I don't, um, but I did text her hello. But um, she she was so, so fascinating and, and interesting to work with. Yeah. She's lived such, she's lived three lives. I mean, it's yeah. really good stuff. Yeah, it? yeah. It's yeah. really, it's like a big kid when you get to know her, but we laugh a lot on set because if you didn't, it's just big sunglasses and stone faced and like old New York tough. And there were PAs who just couldn't look her in the eye. In fact, they would, it was like a running joke. They would tell me that they're ready for Mary on set. She'd be right next to me. They'd be like, Cameron, they're ready for Mary on set. I mean, I would have been the same and way. They'd look. I would have yeah. been like, real yeah. love. Yeah. Come on, Mary. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. People are nervous. And I'd look and I'd go, hey, Mary, did you hear they're ready for you on set? She'd go, yeah, let's go. And we'd have a big, silly time. She was, I said, she has so much energy. We would be sweating dancing in her car, in her car, sitting, dancing get to the club and dance, get back in the car and dance. I said, she's not 48, she's two 24 year olds. That was my, yeah, um, yeah it was, a, it, and it was so touching to see someone so powerful and wonderful who, who also had doubts, who also, mm. you know, she, she got nominated for an Academy Award, that's how her acting career started out. And she's sitting next to Meryl Streep at this like dinner table. She's sitting next to, um, all these big name actresses who are all nodding, going, "Yeah, we we have doubts all the time, all the time about our work. We all do." I was just reading George Clooney. What do you think that is? Yeah. What do you think that is? Like, because I like I, I I I are we in this business, Cameron, that we are always looking for this validation, or do we really just think we suck? Like, is there a performance where you look outside of you and you look at that screen and you're like, "I did that." I can't. No. Oh my god! I don't no? hate what I see, but I can't get lost in it. I can't see it. Like if I'm doing a self tape, I'm really objective. Yeah, yeah. But I, when I see a finished product, I actually can't hear it. I can't hear like my. Literally voice. can't hear. Yeah, it's like it's more. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just nothing's wow. clicking for wow. me. It's very interesting, um, but. Maybe if I watched it, well, who would sit there and watch it over and over and over again? So I, I just, I, I, I just see it and go, yeah, hey, there's my face. <laughs> you have, I, I, if I, I get drunk, I, I if I get drunk enough. Sober, totally sober. Remember, sober, curious. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. I, I have to say, and <laughs> oh my God, this is a room. Why did I choose this moment to say <laughs> I absolutely love my performance on Grey's Anatomy. I love it. I can oh. see it objectively. I get teary watching that person because oh. I, I don't feel like it's me. Like I'm not looking at Dewan up there. I'm in that role. I can put on a whole different hat, if you will. And so for me, I have watched that. And it was the first thing that I was like, you know, like there was Emmy contention and not in contention. It was like not at all. Like uh, we, we did a campaign for it. But like that ABC backed me. I was just so proud of it. Hey, so if can, they backed you, huh? If they backed you, yeah, and like you're I, we're on there, like billing and stuff like yeah, that. You yeah, know, like yeah. they, they sent out to all of their people. Like I was, my name was yeah. there. I can still watch it. You know, That's at dewanjohnson.com so backslash fyc. Like I can totally. Yes. Love it. Come on now. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. No, I'm just saying. So I don't know. Like I, 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 I have always been able, even when I'm watching a self tape uh. or when I'm watching myself back, to separate those two people. Because uh. one of my friends told me that used to work at UTA mm -hmm. was he's a manager there. He says I need you to put. I asked him to look at my resume. 
this big guy was like, look at my resume and all this stuff like that. And he looked at me and he said, I need you to put your business hat on when I look at this. Mm. I don't need you to come from actor to on. And that totally has been my, the way I just approach things when I'm looking at self tapes, mm. when I'm looking at myself, I just kind of like flip that switch mm. and I'm looking at, no, I don't trust him. I don't believe him. He wasn't listening. He wasn't present. That's what I can say. Right. He, instead of like Dewan in that moment. And right. I, so I, right. I'm, I'm always interested when I hear that, like I, you've done some great effing work, oh, you know? Like, yeah, no, I can't. I can say certainly I'll remember what I thought of my work on a certain day, and it's very interesting to then watch it because some days you're like, wow, I really shit the bed. And then you watch it, you're like, no, that was good. It's good to go. Yeah. And then others, I'm like, boom, nailed it. I watch I'm like, meh. That's very but, interesting. But I don't, you know, I, I always think of sports. I'm always like, well, all the best athletes, they don't always hit every shot, do they? It doesn't no. phase me. It doesn't bug me to to not be. And 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 again, we're talking about perception. Like it, I'd I'd rather hear what other people think of my work than than worry about what I'm thinking. I'm doing it because I love it, and I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And that's always been so freeing, knowing like regardless, I'm going to be doing this. So yeah. I might as well work on being a happy person than like what you do isn't who you are. So if you're equating if you're using external things to find happiness, then you're, you're in a lot of trouble. I, you know, so if I'm looking to be validated as a good actor, you know, that is probably not going to end well. But but I, I admire you. External I think things it's like skill. drugs or alcohol, or I mean, or just external What's things that? like external things like drugs or alcohol, or external things oh, like oh, like I'm just other people's, other yeah, people. yeah, yeah, other people's. That's validation. why I sit there and tell myself it's good. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I don't yeah, need yeah, to hear that. Yeah, I, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. If you don't think your work is good, how do I expect anybody yeah. else to really be out there thinking yeah. that a little bit of that? I just wonder that like every single actor thinks the same thing. Like every single actor, if we pulled this room in here. They would be the majority would say, I don't like seeing myself. Mm. I don't want to see my like some version of that. I don't I, like I, I just worked with a she won an Olivier Award, which is in England. That's a big thing. Like it's like an Oscar. It's a theater okay. thing. Okay. But it's the theater Oscar anyway. Yeah, like, I just didn't know. Yeah. She can't she hate like hates watching her work. Even ADR can't dude, ADR, I I just turn it off. I'm not trying to look at myself. <laughs> I'm yeah. not trying to take the scene in at all like I don't you know I think yeah. there's a skill to like Matt Damon talked about that like choosing not to be nervous like there's a skill of just like detaching being objective and just yeah. sort of well I want to make sure that one I'm, I'm respectful of your time and I want to see before our audience if they have any oh. questions for we you we already have an hour we are at an hour like oh my God. did you get lost in my eyes yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. I only got, I feel like I've only had a few minutes just with the left. I was I mean, jumping to the right. The side. Yeah. It's Mexico. Is that no. right? It's got a whole I, other. Listen, I have so much to talk to you about. I, I think, I, I just think yeah. you're, I, I think you're just the bee's knees, bud. I really do. Oh, and we, we've talked about like, you're just an actor's actor. Right. And so <laughs> I really wanted, I really wanted to have this, you know, I'm excited about that. Um, I'm and I'm just going to see if we have any questions. We're all going to look over at Sean right now. And see if do we get any pieces of paper, or oh. if anybody has a question in the audience, we can just ask that too. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay, great. I would like to so do that again. I'm gonna repeat it real quick. He said, "Do you get audition coached, or have you been in in class recently?" I have not okay. been in class recently, and I have not been coached recently. I feel like if it was a certain role. That, that I would be willing and probably want to jump in and do that. I worked with Tom Hanks and I asked him the same and he <laughs> kind of looked at me like there's something wrong with my face. I was like, oh, I don't yeah. do coaching. Or like. He was like, why are you asking if I do classes? I said, well, he I said, just, what are they? <laughs> this still feels new to me. I'm just wondering. He said, what I like to do, Cameron, is come in with a few simple choices and then just be honest and keep it simple. Does that make sense? I was like, yeah, I speak English, it makes sense, huh? <laughs> I, I didn't say that. And then, but that was it. Yeah, so, but I'd like to. I, I would like to, I'd like to do some theater. I mean, I'd like to just keep, feel like it can be so long between work that I feel like, wait, still, I want to do that so 54 long? episodes you've done. 
I, oh. Because I want that flow. I feel like by the end of a project, I'm finally just so at ease with what big scene, close up, tears. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Do it. But if you do it day one, I'm like, who am I? What does this all mean? You know, <laughs> like fall apart. But so yeah, I would. I, 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 I've heard some 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 actors working still do it. So I do it. I do have Craig Archibald that I think is amazing. I always work with him. You know, one of the things that I have found that when you're on a series for a bit of time, I asked Titus the same question about like getting to class and working. He looked at me like, you don't need class. You're good. And I was like, I don't need class. I'm not playing. Because when I would show up on set, I would play as Pierce. Mm -hmm. And when I'd have to audition, I was like, I already know what they want. I already know what's going on. I know how to like be on set. Mm -hmm. And I forgot the element of play mm -hmm. and I, or, or, or being present or mm -hmm. surprised, all that stuff for audition. Mm -hmm. And I think auditioning and being on set are different beasts. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I, one, got to work with Craig Archibald, who is an amazing person, who is just like somebody who was just kind of like, I don't believe you. And I was like, 54 episodes. <laughs> like, and, I, and I was like, you know, but he was right. Right. It, you need, I needed an external okay. eye to say, yeah. you know, yeah. somebody to say, like, yeah. you're, not, you're not going deep enough. Right. You're not playing enough. Okay. You're just trying to, right. use your words, get it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it right. Yeah. 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 You know, I've heard Clooney talk about the end of ER. He's just, like, going through the motions. And yeah. some guest star would come in and just act circles around him, like, because mm -hmm. they're, they're bringing it, and it, there is something. And James Gandolfini, after every friggin' set, every day of shooting Sopranos, would then go with his acting coach and work on the scene for the next night, be up all night, and then he'd start it over. So I think it's wherever you need to go to get to feel like you're ready. Yeah. And I think that, I <laughs> think of The Revenant, because Leonardo DiCaprio went to a slaughterhouse and they cut a horse open for him and he climbed inside of it. So he could know what it's like to climb inside of a horse. The faces, I wish the cameras were on you folks. <laughs> so then you it watch was a that, slaughterhouse. So then, it was like a yeah. <laughs> then you watch that scene that and better. none of us are like, oh, the way he climbed into this horse. It wasn't <laughs> nothing to us, but he needed it so he could feel where he needed to be on the day. You do yeah. whatever you need. And some people are like, oh, method actor or something. They need it because they need to feel. Maybe they don't need it. Brian Cox was talking about the the one of the actors from Succession's method, and he said, you just don't need it. I said, well, he doesn't know that, though. He need he he needs to think he needs it. He, this is how he gets comfortable. I, I don't think we can get into other people's process. No. Right? I think, like, what you do is, like, yeah. you need what you need. Like, I, 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 I just think, of, again. I think it's different for every part, it's too, different. what you prepare. Yes. Here's a fun one. I, I played a role, and they talk about my characters of Pisces, so I thought I'd look into it, and I realized, like, if you go on those those sites that describe zodiacs, yeah. you can they like did your character bio for you, like everything, how they are in love, how they are, like, it's all there. And I was like, cool. So I used this whole thing, like that. Thank you, free website. Like you I might do, do that again. Coach. I might be like, ooh, I'm a Virgo this time. I'm gonna see. Yeah. So um, in summation, you do not need a coach. You just need to go on one of those sites. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just say it over and over and over. I really do just just say it over in every way. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I've ever known to do. It kind of scares me, though, because I don't... I always end up acting it, and then I'm kind of like, okay, that great inspirational moment, I can never do that again. That was in my hotel last night. <laughs> like, We're not I planning. just lost yeah, it. Yeah. I could have had that tomorrow. So, so then there's that... You, now you're overthinking it. <laughs> it's just this never-ending kind of weird. But no, I don't have any me memorization technique, I don't think. I do feel like I'm starting to lose my ability to memorize lines. Well, I hear older men actors, male actors seem to have that. I'm not a part of that. Good. <laughs> Good. No, because I was one of those things that I've tried to tell myself that is one thing you do well, Duan, is memorize lines. And I just keep it. I think it's like a muscle. Yeah. I'm actually sharper when I'm on set, when I'm doing right. it, like when I, right. when I take an audition, I can learn faster. Right. But I try to make sure I keep that, like, and just keep telling myself. I don't want it to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. So I want to make sure I say that to you. Right. Like, don't lean into it unless that's the truth. And you'd be like, no, that's just a moment. I just had a moment where maybe I was distracted or something like that. Right. Because I don't, like, 
I don't, I don't want to call it into this space that right. Right. Um, we can't memorize for that. But right. I like that. Yeah, that's fair, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a I'm again, still sending you a bill. I'm still yeah. sending you yeah, a bill. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's your next question over there? Got one more? Ooh. As my success grew, did my the way I prepped auditions change? Was that a conscious decision? Um, man, no, no, I don't think it's ever changed. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think well, I certainly do a lot more self taping now than I ever did. Um, hate but, it, hate it, love it. But there is a. Funny thing I try to push out of the back of my head, which is like, who else is auditioning for this now? And like, what does this mean? Well, who, okay, this director's watching me. Like, because now I know, like, Scorsese is watching this. And it it's sort of something that shouldn't matter. It's like those poker players when they get to the top and the ante itself is like $250,000 mm -hmm. and they don't even think about it. It's like, you're playing the same game. Like you, you, you have to keep it that grounded and simple. It's just like Tom Hanks said, it's incredible to watch him work because it is simple. He's talking to me about Saturday Night Live and how much he loves it. And then they say rolling and he goes, oh, and he like moves over and he gets in part and he's, he's in yeah. care. You know, there's a turn on, turn off, just simplicity to this that is, it's not complicated, but it's, it's, um, it takes a while to get there, I think, for some of us, I suppose. But yeah, yeah, I, I think I think the goal might be to not change anything I, I did mm. before. I think that that's sort of the funny thing about success is we start changing the way we act, the way, and that it shouldn't, how you got here was because you were humble, you kept things simple, you did the right things, and you kept it there. So keep doing that. I love that. We finish. We good. All minds clear. Anything out there? Another question? Oh, God. Can, Cameron, do you have do you have time for these I last have all two? Day, yeah. Yeah, two left. Okay. okay. All right. All right. right. I'm still processing the fact that you booked this amazing role. I have to show you on the left now. Um, Which one? <laughs> My hunter? Yes. So With a line taped to the side. Yeah. Right. To get the right. Right. Um, I just didn't have a choice, and I just wasn't going to stress about it. You know, things mm -hmm. aren't perfect, and the only thing I can control is is how I feel about it. So, it. I just checked the camera, and I looked and went, "Yeah, it looks like I'm just thinking. I'm just talking, and you know where my eye line is, and then I just kind of look over here. It just looks like I'm thinking and going back." So it worked. I don't think I've had to do that for another audition, actually. There's just so many lines. But, you know, having said that, like, sometimes your best read is that cold one because it's just so, <laughs> what's the word, ignorant coming? It's just so innocent, you know, it's so truthful. It's just so in the moment. Um, so there was a little bit of benefit to that. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. How do I prepare now? prepare a character for auditions. I I just memorize and, and I do try to keep it simple and truthful. One thing I think is interesting, there's an actor, he played Dudley Dursley in um, Harry Potter and, and now he's worked with the Coen brothers like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. His name's Harry Melling. He just, if you see the pale blue eye, just his performance alone, he plays um, um, Edgar Allan Poe, Christian Bale's the other lead. And he's just unbelievable. What he does for self tapes at times, depending on the tape, is he just, he doesn't even have someone else reading the other lines to him. He just does the scene, he pauses like someone's giving him lines, he's reacting, then he says his line, and then later his wife comes in and like he superimposes those lines in where he wants them. She just has to say them quickly in certain parts of his face. But I thought that was pretty interesting for certain tapes. I think the self-tape thing is really nice to get to Take your time, do as many takes as you want, you know. Yeah. And if I I'm living in I'm living in country, so I don't exactly have good actors that easily at my disposal. So um that's one thing that I'm doing a little differently. 
Mm. Yeah. It's a good one. I'm going back there. And we'll, well, we'll in Jeopardy, the Cold Green team, buddy. <laughs> hey, thanks. So Fincher was doing Fight Club, and Edward Norton was going up on the line, and so he just got really loose. He's just improv because he didn't know what to do, and then he just gave up on it and just went, fuck, cut. And Fincher goes, come here. And, he, it, and they go look at the dailies, and he says, do you see this right here? Right before you said fuck and cut, you, that was the best acting you've done all day because you were just... You're so far past anything you've prepped. If I think about mm. how I've been right here, right now, I can't think of the way I said things or what my posture was when I did or anything like that. I just was. And the thing about um, one friend, what does he call it? He calls it, um, I can't remember anymore, but that idea of like pre-planning everything, like I'm going to say this line, now I'm going to squint. And I'm gonna take a puff of my cigarette and blow it out. Is it bad acting? Is and I'm gonna finish my line. Yeah, it's that's that. the word. Is that the word? Yeah, it's, it's pre-planning. It's that's Nailed not how it. we talk. You imagine you're on your first date. You're like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say this, yeah. and then I'm yeah. gonna cut, yeah. and then I'm gonna take a bite, yeah. and, then and then I'm gonna, gonna look laugh. up, and then I'm gonna, and laugh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something funny. <laughs> and she's like, oh, he's <laughs> insane. This is cool. Um, right. Actor value. I think call it an actor value. I love that. So, and uh, so yeah, there is this this just gift of of mistakes of let's let's list some of the fam most famous lines in film hey i'm walking here you talking to me we're going to need a bigger boat all improv um there's more of them I'm, I'm, i just can't remember them but they're all improv Dustin Hoffman just wants to say i'm acting here cuz this car was fucking up the shot but it came out i'm just, I'm, 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 I'm walking here you know which I don't know why that's so famous. I also, you talking to me, I don't get that one. It's not, it doesn't grab me as much as, as, as I would. This is I would hilarious. Expect. You just like, like lifted all these like improvs up and then you're like, I don't like them. It's true. <laughs> it's true. So we should stick to the lines. <laughs> Here's true. Yeah. That was awful. Um, I gave you good advice, and then, and then I just I was like, it down. forget everything I just said, which is acting, right? Like prep, know everything inside and out, and then forget it all. That's exactly what I just did with and my go. own advice. That's fine. I'm going to give more advice like that. Here's what I think you should do. And then afterwards, I'm going to, but don't listen to any of that. Don't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things that I, you know, will end it on is that I, I think with, with acting that I have learned again over and over is just, don't take your artistry out of this. Or a better way he said it is don't take your gift out of this. And I think we've gotten so far into what do what does David Fincher want? Or what oh, yeah. does um, the casting director want? Or yeah. what does yeah. X whoever want? Yeah. We've taken ourselves out of that equation yeah. because we're so worried about what everybody else wants. Yeah. And I think that's when we get it wrong. Yeah. And what we really realize is they want us. Yes, they want you to make some big choice, and they can always just say, don't do that. If you yeah. can, it's what they always say, right? Go too far, and they can pull you back. If you don't bring enough, then then what do they do from there? Then you get more notes than... They say good, good job. Fun. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> They say good job. That was a good job. That was a good, good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's there's just something to be said for yeah. coming in with some something bold and uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman always said give me something that ooh give me something that ooh I love the way he'd say that like everything's success 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 but like I think that he said the sin is holding back from from your gift from from what you have it's uh it's um it's better to just whirm, and they, they, they can always just and they, they um uh, Tom Hanks's wife Rita Wilson she was talking about they just done a movie with Meryl, and she's in the editing room. She, she, you have no idea how many of these takes are just brutal. They just are, she is way off on this instinct, but she took it. They talk about uh, Apocalypse Now, Marlon Brando's, they uh, Francis Ford Coppola's, oh, maybe he waited until Brando had passed on, but he said, if you take, it's like this Academy Award winning performance, there's this amazing one cut 
one shot monologue and um, he said if you add two seconds before or after the monologue starts some of the worst acting you've ever seen mm -hmm. in your life because that man just gives no fucks he's just that free and I've worked with um, Mark Forster who's Where are we going over there? Then it'll go back to one, and you just have to work with it. He's just exploit is no problem experimenting right here, right now, in front of these millions of dollars, in front of all this, you know, work going on. Yeah. He he's he's doing what he needs to do, and it's utterly fearless. I don't, I that that's a hell of a gift. That's a hell of a no filter moment, you know. But but it's an example of of how free you can get to how get it wrong. It. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Cameron. You got to get to Hollywood. I know. But I want to ask this last question of you is what would Cameron, you in the chair, present moment, say to younger Cameron, younger actor Cameron? Well, I, I kind of feel kind of I think I said it like I, I feel like if I would I would go up to him and say I'm not giving you any advice because if you're regretting your mistakes, you aren't mm -hmm. learning. Like something weird in this country where when we were kids, like you were teased if you were too smart and you were teased if you were dumb. So you had to be like right in the middle. And like yeah. we have this weird element in this culture of that. Um, so it's, it's wonderful and refreshing to see when someone's wrong. They're not embarrassed. They're curious. Yeah. They're not haughty. They're curious, you know. And and I kind of feel like I would want my younger self to go ahead and just figure it out because I did and I and I and I don't regret anything because I feel like I've learned from so much. Um, I would also probably mess with him. I'd probably be like, "All right, Cameron, there's something very important. Like the world's at stake, and you must <laughs> never, under any circumstances." And then, like a guy who I paid to come in and like shoot me and be blanks and then there'd be like blood and then I'd pretend to die right, and right. Cameron would be holding me. Right. So you want to traumatize, like, you want to traumatize dying. younger Cameron. And then I'd like, yeah, but then I'd like, look up and like be like, gotcha, gotcha, bitch, and I'd slap. Should I do these again? Yes. Yes. These yes. Again. I'll watch them. This is good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Man. telling you i'm telling you i told you that this episode was going to be so good and i know you're like come but you say that about all your podcasts i know but because I, I mean it i love it I'm, I'm i'm so like humble that i get to do this because i only get to do this with people that i love and that i enjoy talking to um and this medium for me was just out of this world which you don't know maybe i've mentioned it probably in season one that this podcast podcast the think bigger actors podcast was born in the pandemic. And so I don't have that energy or that feel that most podcast uh, people have, you know, they, they, they do it um, when they have live, a lot of live performance people in there in the, in the room, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't have it. I've never had that before. Everything is usually done on zoom. So to be in a space where I get to like do this and feed off of the energy in the room from other actors and stuff, it was just great. It was just great. So I'm really, really, really happy and excited excited that I got to do that and I'll be doing more. I'll be doing more. And so if you want to be a part of those, you should let me know. <laughs> but here's what I want to say. I want to bring this episode together for this D12 shot. Something that Cameron said that I, I was just like chomping at the bit to talk more about. 
actors want to get it right. Directors want you to get it wrong. Okay, we're going to have to pull up a chair for this one. This is a really, really, really good one because I'm a recovering get it right actor, right? I'm one of those actors that like, I want you to know that I dotted my I's and I crossed my T's and I am a good actor. I did my job. I also spills over into my real life, right? It, 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 it's the thing that I can say almost perfectionism, is it? Or I want you to know that I am a good kid or I'm a good person or I'm likable. And so I want to, I'm, it's easy for me to say I did it. So I got everything right. That doesn't always translate in acting. As a matter of fact, it doesn't work well. And one of the things that I do now at the end of my preparation, at the end of all the work that I've talked about that I've done before, is I have an effort take. I'm just one of those things where I'm just kind of like, what if you just were messy here, Dewan? What if like you 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 did all the work, you 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 do all the script analysis, you've done all of that stuff, you've lived in the life of this character, but then when you get up to shoot it, or then when you get up to audition, you say to yourself i say to myself let's just be messy that's not me trying to be messy that's me not reaching for a word that's if i stumble on a word then i'm okay with that you know if, if, if something doesn't pop up into my mind at whatever happens it is a-okay you're listening to this podcast and i'm sure even in this d12 shot or somewhere in the beginning intro or somewhere live i have stumbled words and it's a-okay you're not you know I, I hope not. <laughs> I don't know to be sure, but I was going to say, you're not holding that against me. We don't hold that stuff against us. That stuff is beauty. That stuff is relatable. That stuff, if you're a director, you're looking at, great, this person doesn't have it all together. I'm getting to watch them put it together. That is beauty. We heard him saying, actors want to get it right. Directors want you to get it wrong. If you could take that, if you could take that into your next audition, if you could take that into your next self-tape, think about how electric it could be. I don't want you to pretend. I don't want you to pretend that, oh, now I'm going to mess it up. But really just being a little bit messy, not doing what you plan. Because appointment-based acting, appointment-based acting is the death. It's the death of your acting. Oh, I got to walk over here because I, 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 that's what I did in rehearsal. No. Oh, I got to cry right here because it says cry on this line. Appointment-based acting, it will be the death of it. So I'm asking you, because I talk about this a lot inside of my self tasted book program, my thinking, feeling, doing, same part of that is like when we get done with the thinking part of that, I don't want you to come back to the thinking part. I don't want you to come back to that part. I want you to really go into you, really go into these characters, really dive deep into like, like what if I just got this wrong? What if, Would it be okay? Yes. And it might even be beautiful. So beautiful. I can't wait to see if you try that out for your next act, your next audition. I can't wait to see what happens for that. I am so incredibly humbled that I get to be a part of this journey for you and with you and on it and all that stuff. Let's keep getting it wrong and being a-okay with it. I told you, Cameron, he got me thinking. <laughs> Cameron got me going. He got me going. I hope he got you going as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know what to do. If you're on the Instagrams or whatever it is, like, um, tag me at thinkbiggercoaching.com. I so much, so much, so much love being in this space with you and talking about, you know, the craft over and over and over and over and over again with you. So I'm going to sign this off like I have been signing off any of my last couple of um, podcasts. And I'm going to say, don't get out of line. Don't quit. Borrow my faith in you. Just do it. Just, just borrow my faith in you. And I'm going to add this last piece like I've been doing. Hold the vision, not the circumstance. Hold the vision of your career, not the circumstance. I'll see you next week.